Hello again, it's Marxist, and we'll be finishing off Gullywash today with episode 3 on how to push Gullywash last. In this video, I'm going to go over common last pushing techniques, how to hold the lobby before you push, first of all, and how to run each off class, what to do with different sorts of situations when pushing last, such as having advantage, not having advantage, and then giving it sort of a generalized checklist for each of the six players as to what they should be doing or what their specific goals are for this particular last. But before we can talk about attacking last and the various different factors that go into that, I want to talk about how to defend a lobby because the enemy team may try to do things to you periodically while they're holding last, particularly if they have uber advantage or a very good sniper or a player that likes to go spy. So you need to account for those things and be able to deal with them. The hold I've got here is you've got your roamer in Riverside by himself. He needs to be careful of two things. A, a sticky trap. That could be anywhere up in there. So shoot some rockets in front of yourself into some of the little nooks and crannies and make sure that there's not a sticky trap. Also, at the very, very bottom of Riverside, occasionally there will be a sniper hiding. If he kills you, that's not a big deal. You're just the roamer. Come back as an off class, like heavy or sniper yourself, uh, or whatever makes you happy. It really doesn't matter in that case. He hasn't killed anyone that important. So just make sure to look for that. Look for the dot and, and such. Make sure that there isn't one down in there. Because you'd really rather not die. And then in the stairway, to help the roamer, you've got a scout. And that's just in case they have a scout that gets really aggressive on you or something. So it's Roamer, if anybody that isn't the combo starts just running at you, yell for help, that scout comes up the stairs, helps you out. The demo stands in the middle of the lobby. That way he can spam and attack both uh, entrances into the lobby in the, in the upper area of the lobby. Your pocket more or less just locks out shutter door. Uh, make sure to check that area. It's, a lot of people call it the locker room uh, that's directly behind Shutter Door. Make sure to check that really, really well for traps because it's sort of like the like Badlands, if you're familiar with that. Like that little door from Upper Lobby is always trapped. And this is the case for Gully Wash where that the locker room or somewhere around the shutter door is pretty much always going to be trapped. You should always assume it's trapped. And then you've got your, your med sort of in position to heal everyone who's not the roamer. And then you have a scout stand on the second little set of stairs. And you basically just make sure that no one walks in main or through sneaky and tries to get up those stairs onto your med. Everybody else sh should be pretty vigilant because spies are somewhat common here and also as med if you don't feel safe like they're spamming you really hard you know the in the other team has a bunch of uber advantage or or something of that sort you can back up into the stairway and in that case you just have a the scout that stands on the stairs normally just steps out a little bit and you bring your pocket and demo back a ways and that's that's basically all there is to that. That's sort of like the more passive version, but your med is extremely safe standing in that stairwell as long as no one stabs him in the back. So keep your back to the wall uh, if you're a med player. But this should allow you to hold very well. The biggest mistakes that uh, most teams make when they're trying to hold lobby and see that they can't attack last anymore or in fact losing second is because they don't watch the lower area enough and a bunch of people end up standing in Riverside. Uh, and you don't want a whole bunch of people standing in Riverside unless you're about to push through Riverside. So to begin talking about pushing, we're going to talk about pushing with advantage first. And that means you've got 25% uber advantage and you're just going to push off of that. You may have picks as well. Uh, but... 
In that case, if you believe yourself to have uber advantage of a sizable degree, you should bring in three people plus your medic in your uber. That could be a chariot uber with two scouts, or both soldiers, whatever, and the additional demo man. You should always bring the demo man into those fights. He shouldn't crowd the door and come in right away. In general, you won't need to uber him or flash him, because the doorway that he intends to come through should have already been cleared by an uber, and anybody that's on the other team should be pushed back by the uber, so the demo should be able to get in for free without too much trouble. Uh, you're going to want to go Shutter Door or Riverside, and never ever, even if they wiped over second, and you're six up and they've got like one respawner, never never push through lower main the the third doorway the third true doorway the bottom one that leads you to sneaky in the lower lobby never go through that door it's bad for you and you may end up losing uh because you went through that door so just don't do it so i'll go over two basic principles here of two separate pushes for pushing with advantage Two basic pushes to do when you've got advantage is the chariot uber through shutter door. And all you'll do there is you'll have your pocket check the locker room, make sure that that's all happy and trap free. Otherwise, you just knock the trap down and shoot it with your various uh, bullet weapons and then go through the shutter door with your two scouts. The reason it's called the chariot uber is because the two scouts are a little bit like horses on a chariot. They should stay even with each other and in front of the medic. Don't, don't let yourself be separated from your scout partner because if you get too far out of the, the field of view of your medic, you're not going to get ubered. And at the end of the day, you are a scout, so you may die if that happens. The objective is for neither of you to die uh, in that case. Also, because it's an advantage push... Nobody should really be dying at all during the, the opening phases of the push. And you don't need to suicide on the point as a scout uh, directly. So you don't have to worry about that so much. You can focus on getting kills at the start, especially during the uber period. And then it should be decided before you push which of the scouts is going to dive onto the point and debt the stickies unless the demo is dead. Then you're just going to win the game. So hopefully your chariot will find the demo. Your other option that's also quite popular is to just go Riverside and bomb both of your soldiers out of Riverside. You'll flash both of them uh, if need be. And then you, the med and the demo, just walk out of Riverside and just sticky stuff. Hopefully in support of the soldiers. Then you'll have taken control of the right side. A scout dies on the point, if need be, uh, to debt the sticks. And then your pocket goes to the point uh, as, as soon as the uber starts to end. And that should pretty much result in you capping. Now for the situation you'll find yourself in most of the time, which is pushing without advantage. So their medic has uber and you may not have it yet or it's equal. You can do three things in order to make your last push a bit more successful. One, take their uber away. Two, give yourself a player advantage. Or three, give yourself a health advantage. I'll go over the various ways that you do this. You take their uber away by bombing them or doing something to their med that makes him die or pop. You can give yourself a player advantage by killing one of their players, typically by a spy or sniper. Generally, that has some synergy with take their uber away. Or you give yourself a health advantage by running a heavy that will have crits heals uh, when he comes onto the field and will have 450 health. In a video, I'll show video examples of the various things you can do here with that, as well as explain one sort of rough play that I've seen a lot of teams do that works very well for getting the uber out and then re-pushing last uh, with a moderate amount of success. Obviously, sometimes on this map, 
because the last is hard to push. You'll do everything right. You'll get the med pick or you'll get a pick and then you'll push and it won't work. So don't be afraid of that. Just know when things are going poorly and you need to get out so that you can push again. But anyway, so we'll get into the video examples now. Your best first option is as Romer to go off the launch pad and just jump directly on their med. Like that. Works pretty well. You also have another option. And then the other easiest one is to just go off of Riverside here and jump straight across. So that's that's the easy way to get uh, pops out with your roamer. Now assuming either that your roamer's bomb failed or you want to not bomb your roamer and instead just have some player go to an off class, say your roamer isn't a very good sniper, heavy spire pyro, and you want a scout to do it instead, then you'll just have him get a buff, run in, try to kill somebody, probably die. And uh, everybody else can spam to help him out, but that's it's not essential. You're just having him die so that you can have someone go a different class. And this map has four viable options. Uh, the first three more common than the final one, but the final one's a fun little thing you can throw in every now and again uh, if you want to really irritate the other team. So you've got Sniper, Heavy, Spy, and Pyro. You'll go these classes after you either run a suicide and die, or you bomb your roamer in and he doesn't get the pop. So any of these options will work. It, it works easiest if it's your roamer, because it, it's a straightforward bomb. Uh, he dies, comes back as another class if the medic doesn't pop. Or you could have another class do it if you really want that sniper, or you have a skilled spy uh, on a scout class and you'd rather have them do it than you just have them run in at the medic and try to get them to pop and if they fail then they go to one of the off classes and uh, I'll show you in a video uh, how to play each one on this map if you've decided to run a sniper as an off class which is probably the most popular way to go about doing this don't yell for medic None of that. Don't do that. You don't want them to know of your existence. So you run over here, get healed from the med, and then you just go right down here. You scope in at the wall until you're charged, and you make sure this is clear. The main thing you're going to do is try and hide your dot, and then you're going to look for stickies all along this top area. Once you're sure that that's okay, you just walk over here to the left until you bump into a wall. And then you take care to conceal your dot some more and slowly edge to the right. At which time you should start seeing this. And usually the med's foot is going to... If the medic isn't standing perfectly in the shadow of this girder, you're going to see his leg or foot and that's an easy pick. Otherwise, just keep poking until you see a head and that'll get you what you need to get. If you can't get anything from that angle, you have to go to Riverside, generally. You can do the launch pad too, but it's more dangerous, so I'll show that last. So you just poke in this way, taking care to conceal your dot in areas where they won't be, and then the med should be somewhere around this area, typically. So you just pop him in the leg, and he's done. If you go launch pad, you gotta hop across this kind of quick because they'll know you're here and there will probably be a lot more contestion here but you're just going for a pick on whatever is over here in general unless there isn't anything and then you can get an easy shot on the med but it's gonna be a hard shot to get as heavy your team can push in when you get to about this spot they're just gonna go ahead and uber the pocket in and then you walk up uh, riverside this is the way I like to do it and then you can just hop Oop, I screwed it up you can do a little hop right here and that'll pretty much put you in the best possible position to uh, kill everything 
your med when he pushes should they'll do their uber either from over here or riverside but your med needs to start making his or her way back over to here so that when you do your little hop you get yourself in a good position so it's, it's actually unfortunate that you have to practice it just a little but this is easily the best position for heavy a lot of teams will bring him in lower and it's hard for him to shoot some stuff because the, he, they're getting cover from the stairs and the shutter door is okay to bring him in but things are kind of far away so it's my favorite option there is riverside the key with running a heavy is just that you make sure that your medic gets to him and heals him to 450 quickly and that you initiate your push a bit when he's on the way that way you can do things quicker it'll save you a couple seconds if you notice that that you're having trouble doing that then just wait on the heavy to get there and that'll be that a spy, the first thing you want to do is figure out how to disguise yourself as a friendly. I'm blue, so I want to be a blue sniper. There we go. Then you just want to make a big show of the fact that you're a sniper. Maybe look here. Maybe look here. You don't want to take damage if you don't have to, but you just make a show of it. Then you disguise yourself as what you would typically go as. So, a scout. There are a couple ways to gain entry here. The easiest ways are obviously... You can check right here and see if there's a, a soldier or anything going to mess with you. You can come down here. This point works pretty well for Cloak and Dagger. And, and the standard watch too. Uh, you can run in through here. You can probably go Riverside as well. Or you can go all the way under and then just walk up around behind here. Good decloak locations are obviously in sneaky. That's That can work out pretty well. And then you just come up like this. Uh, another decent decloak spot is right here. This tends to work. Uh... Yes, the best decloak spots, if you're using a standard watch, you're going to want to decloak in Sneaky here or in this spawn door area back here. So if you're unable to use uh, the spy unlocks. Otherwise, you're just gonna you're either going to come in off the launch pad, fall down, make your way to Sneaky, make your way to the back side of spawn. Universally, the most popular way is to just decloak here and then it looks like a scout went and got ammo and then was like hey I need a buff and then you get the med so spy can work pretty well it's not uncommon to see spy on this map because generally the decloaking sound under here is not very loud and if they're pushed way up so the med is where I typically have them stand uh, in in my other guide they're not going to hear this very effectively, and you'll get your easy stab. And as a final special little treat, a goofy option you can run is Pyro, and then you just have him go Riverside to Under. And then once he's Under, you have the Uber go in, and then he comes up here, blows the stickies and all the people off the point, and caps. It, it doesn't always work, and but... Uh, if you're just really unsure of what to do, having the pyro go riverside and then blowing the stickies off and trying to cap that way can be pretty effective. There aren't too many good ways to contest you because of this piece of glass here. So they've either got to come above you or under this way and it's pretty easy for you to keep people off of you and off the point and also clearing the sticks. So you don't need to sack a scout or whatever on it because your pyro's already taken care of that. Now, before you do anything with an off class or uh, any other sort of push really, while you're holding lobby, you shouldn't just be sitting around not doing anything. 
you need to check for traps on all the doors you intend to use or go through, and you need to make sure that you've seen all six of their players, unless obviously some of them are dead. Make sure that they don't have a gun, or if they do, that you've got a plan to deal with that, and if they have a pyro, you need a unique and interesting way to deal with that as well. And uh, I'll go over all that now. If they do have a gun, you should kill it while your sniper or spy is getting in and doing things, or before you suicide altogether. If you know that it exists, use your two soldiers and your demo to peek in and spam it down. That's the best thing that you can do. Don't Uber in against a sentry gun because that gives them seven players that you have to deal with. It's best to remove the presence of the seventh player that has an aimbot prior to your pushing. Now, occasionally on this map, you're going to get surprised by the sentry gun. A lot of medics, when they hear the dee 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 and the attacking sounds of the sentry, will panic and start flashing everybody. Don't do that. Calm down and make sure that the Ubered player, whoever has the Uber at that moment, keeps the Uber and maintains the attention of the sentry gun. So unless you say Uber in your pocket and he gets launched a million miles away by the gun, which can happen, uh, the player that has the Uber basically just acts as a shield for your demo man so that he can throw the three stickies down really quick and kill the gun. Generally, the NG isn't going to be there tanking it. He'll be hiding in spawn, so you can single debt your stickies. You don't have to pile all three up like you're in a pub. But if... If the NG is tanking it, then you, you've got to pile them up, and your Uber target is going to have to help you kill the gun as well. So it's best not to be surprised. Try and get, take care of the gun, either while your sniper is peeking around for someone to kill, or before you run your suicide altogether. If your suicide is the one that finds the gun, just wait for them to come back and then start working on that sentry gun. Because in general... If it's Uber v Uber and you've yet to kill any of their players, you've really got all the time in the world to work on that sentry gun and you'll eventually find a way to get it down. As opposed to using your Uber and wasting 50% or more of your Uber on killing their 7th player. If they've chosen to run a pyro against you, you should be able to see that pretty well ahead of time. And in that case, they have dictated to you that you have to uber a scout first. So you just uber your scout, he goes through shutter door, and he shoots the pyro to death. You don't necessarily even need to kill the pyro, you just, if he's air blasting a scout, the scout still does perfectly fine damage, whereas the soldier and demo really can't hurt him all that much, and may kill additional members of your team if their projectiles get reflected. So just put a scout on him, if it's Uber v Uber and they've got a pyro, you put a scout on him, use the early part of the Uber for the scout, and then you finish the Uber with your pocket as your scout player dies on the point to debt the stickies and let the rest of your team get in. Now assuming that they still have their Uber but you've got your pick, so the sniper killed their demo or whatever, uh, or a scout, any, anything of the sort, or the spy killed their heavy, something, you're ready to push in. Now, when you go in with your Uber, don't bring more than one player in on the Uber. You can't afford to flash your Uber because you have to pop earlier than they do. So your Uber's already going to be shorter, and each additional flash makes it more short. <laughs> and you don't want that in your life. That makes your job hard. So... Your pocket pushes things away from the door he comes in at, so Riverside, Shutter Door, pretty much. Pushes things away, and then additional players will follow in through that door after the Uber. So, after their Uber is done. And that's pretty. M and then you take up position and you ki get your kills. Uh, Scout dies on the point, or the pocket dies on the point. Either works on this map. Uh, the pocket should definitely pressure the point after the Uber. That seems to be most effective. Uh, so you solo Uber in, then the people come in through that side. You can have people come in through other doors as well. Just make sure that they've got buddies uh, to help them do that. 
You can also have your demo come in from lower main if you get a lot of traction in your push and they're way far off of shutter door because then that's a, kind of a nice low position, but I, I don't like that really. If you can go in shutter, you should go in shutter uh, and make sure that your demo has protection. But I'll go over that in the individual class section, which we're coming up to now. As Scout pushing this last, one of you has to die on the point whenever it's Uber v Uber. That should be outlined well ahead of time uh, or while you're gathering in lobby, which of you needs to die on the point. Even then, sometimes you're still going to have to die on the point when it's Uber versus no Uber if there are sticks on it and the demo isn't going to die in the next like two seconds. So you want to, the way you do that is you want to wait until about four to six seconds into the Uber to die on the point. If it's Uber versus no Uber and you've Ubered in, you don't have to die on it that soon, but you want to get on it as soon as your Uber is over and you should know that that's your job. If there's any pyro on the map at all, that's your job to deal with. And you should be in position to deal with it. And the pyro's existence should be known about well ahead of time. And after the uber, if you're not the scout that's dying on the point, your job is to protect the demo and make sure that nothing interrupts him as he's trying to win the game for you by spamming everybody on the point. So just keep things away from him, and if he starts yelling for help, it's it's your fault if you let something get past and get on him. As Roamer, don't bomb at the start of an Uber unless it's part of the plan. If they have an Uber and you're not running a suicide, do not jump the medic. Because all that's going to happen is you're going to bomb into an Uber and die, and do absolutely nothing because the other players that you're shooting are invincible. You don't have the ability to fight Ubers as Roamer, so don't try. If you're running a suicide, that's different, because you're just trying to get the Uber out. But as part of a push, you have no business doing that. If you're not part of the push, sit back either at Riverside or Launchpad and spam rockets at their medic. The reason you do that is you can help get the pop out, give your po throw your pocket a little bit of a bone, and help him out in that regard. And also, a lot of the times, hurt players are going to go, oh, I need to get to my medic. And sometimes they'll run into your rockets because they're not even looking at you. And you may get kills that way or make it such that the player is so hurt that they have to get in spawn. And they're effectively dead at that point. So you can do that for your team. Or if they have a heavy, you should spam rockets at him and do 45 damage at a time to him. Uh... Then, wait for an opening and bomb in. You don't want to jump at a heavy, never ever jump at a heavy, and never ever jump at a scout. So, keep that in mind, but if you see a good opening to jump, then you jump in. But only after their uber's out, and only if there's not a heavier scout that you're jumping into. As Pocket, you're going to be getting the solo uber. It's That 8 seconds is your personal time to shine if it's uber v uber unless they have a pyro if they have a pyro then it's going to be on a scout to take care of it and you're just going to follow in the scout and hope that the the combination of you and the scout can deal with the pyro and that you don't get killed while the uber is on the scout after the uber go to the point and jump on the glass or fall to the ground I'm going to show a quick video after this slide of what exactly I mean by that. And as you're Ubering in, heavies and demos are your priority. So after you get the pop out, either by shooting at uh, the med directly or just anybody who's present, after that you're going to want to spend your time shooting at heavies and demos. Just as a little tip and trick, I'm going to include one more thing. Generally, on Uber v Uber fights, your pocket's gonna if your pocket does come in off the shutter door, or even out of Riverside, a good option for him after the fight is to arrive up here, shoot the sticks off the point for the scout that's gonna land on it, and then when they crash the point, you've got nice height advantage on them down here, or you can even drop down and help cap. That's a really great spot for the pocket to go. 
because you need to reload after you've got the pop out and maybe toss some damage around and this is a pretty easy jump to make and people are going to leave you alone also if you stand here at sort of the the apex of the arc then they're going to have a hard time splashing you they'll have to they'll have to hit you with a direct rocket or direct scatter fire and that's not always something that people can do really effectively and you're reloading anyways at this point, so it really doesn't matter. If they're shooting at you as opposed to someone that does have rockets or ammo, then all the better. As med, it'll do you best not to flash in uber v uber fights. Try not to have to, and if anyone comes in so closely that they make you have to flash, you need to scold them afterwards because it, it shortened your uber and made your last push less likely to succeed. If it's uber v no uber, nobody should ever die. You should flash anyone who's hurt. That doesn't necessarily apply if there's a pyro and you have to uber a scout in. Uh, in uber v uber, you're going to try and hold it on the scout as much as possible. But if your soldier starts to get a little banged up, you need to just say forget about the scout. The pocket's the one with the health that needs saving. Because scout can kind of dodge around. Uh, and avoid damage on his own. So don't don't let your pocket die. Just make sure that he's got 300 health before the push. And if he gets down around 200, then you're definitely going to have to hold the rest of the Uber on him. So that he gets back up to 300 for when the Uber comes off. And hopefully the Pyro was dealt with by then. If you go two players down at any point relative to their team, so you push in 6v5 and you lose three players, it's time for you to get out. Uh, that's just an example. If you lose two people straight out on the fight, then it's time for you to get out. Uh, and after your Uber is over, you should either go straight to your demo man, or if you've run a heavy, you should go straight to your heavy. If you have run a heavy, your demo needs to come with the heavy. And then that way both of your priority heal targets are close together. So that you can get your heavy to 450 and your demo to 260 relatively quickly. And then you can just win the game. As demo, you are the lord of the last point and this is how you win games for your team. So somebody will bait the point. It needs to be a scout or your pocket. Situations will change. Uh, but as soon as you see the enemy team start grouping around their last point so as to keep you from capping it, that's when you shoot four to six stickies on them and just kill everything and win the game for your team. You're primarily responsible for killing sentries as well. So if your team gets surprised by a gun, you need to be in position to get in and kill the gun before your uber gets completely destroyed by it. You are you shouldn't have to worry about taking damage too much during that time. But the main emphasis for demo on lasts is wait a little bit so that things can get grouped up on the point and then get in a good position to shoot the point and kill everything that tries to get on it. Uh, and if nothing is on the point, then your team is doing something wrong and you need to be yelling for them to get on the point so that the, the enemy will group up around the point and you can kill all of them. Because if your team doesn't get them to group up on the point, they're going to kill you. And then your team can't win last in most situations. And that's been my rough guide to Gully Wash Last. Feel free to post any comments or suggestions or questions below and I'll get back to you as soon.